Dr. Homebrew is brought to you by Five Star Chemicals, providing safety and cleaning supplies for brewing, distilling, and winemaking at fivestarchemicals.com. Dr. Look! Stand aside, nurse. I'm Dr. Homebrew. Welcome to the show. This is Dr. Homebrew for July. We're sitting here. We have a ton of beer to get through. And the, the caveat here is that uh, there's no homebrew at all. There's no homebrew to be set, to be found, to be seen, to be drunken in on this show at all. Because these two shows are Keith, Kyle, Steve, George's last two appearances on Dr. Homebrew for the foreseeable future. And uh, we might, uh, we might, you know, we might bring him in every now and then, because uh, homie's moving to Oklahoma. Uh, somebody said Idaho today, so <laughs> I've now learned I'm moving to Idaho, Oklahoma. Hold and on, hold on. Why do you have like you got deep space echo? Right now. <laughs> uh, that, I, I brought my reverb box. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, how come every time... Just, let that, me switch mics. Let me switch mics. This how come awful. every time I come into the fucking studio, there's something There's something changed? I hate this studio! Wow, I could hear that echo. Let me, let me switch, switch mics. All right, try that. There you go. Is that better? Oh, that's so much better. Hi. Can I Welcome use the to other, Coffee Talk. Can I use the other one occasionally when I want that reverb effect? Yeah. Oh. Here, try, try, go ahead and talk in that. Um, talk, this one or the other one? Oh. I hear reverb there. It out. Maybe I'll use reverb. <laughs> well, here's what we're doing. We're going into we're going to Keith's cellar. We're going live to Keith's cellar. Uh, Keith, do me a favor. Are you are you? Can you hear me? Patch us in uh, from the yeah, cellar. Yeah, I, I can hear you. Um, can okay. Hear you. Well, do me a favor. Open the door and get go. Start walking deep into your cellar and pull out some gems for us, please. All right. <laughs> Keith, can you hear me? Are you there yet? I can hear you. Oh, yeah. man. Yes. Special sound effects on Dr. Homebrew. <laughs> okay, good. What do you have to? What do you have for us to drink? Well, here, just pull it out. Actually, just come back because this is just get, yeah. it's getting old now. Okay. <laughs> All right, welcome back from your cellar, Keith. Thank you. Okay, I'm glad you came out of the closet. To, I mean, cellar. It's a big cellar. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm gonna shoot myself in the head. Um, so it's Keith's last two shows here, and you're you're moving. I You're am moving. moving. That is correct. You don't want to move. Not to Idaho, not to Oklahoma. I am moving to Ohio. Is um, it really? Is there a difference? You're gonna uh, you're gonna pick nits on what state you're moving to. Yeah, I think I think there's a difference. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like like touring bands don't go to Idaho. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe maybe they built true. a spill or whatever. But yeah, there's not <laughs> a lot of, lot of action going on in Idaho and Oklahoma. Mm. I don't really think many people go there. I mean, I guess what Flaming Lips were from. Oklahoma, is that that right, if I remember correctly? Is it? Yeah, I think so. Norman, yeah, Oklahoma. I, I thought they're from Norman. Uh, um, or at least they were hanging out there for a while. But it's a college. It's a college town, Norman, I guess. For, uh, right. Yeah. But, the, but anyway, I'm moving to Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. All right, what's going to be your new address? Let's give it out right now. Uh, 2206. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I actually don't know the address right now. All right, well, hey, man, look, uh, uh, sad to see you go. Um, but we're going to love watching leave because we're going to look at your ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I hear you. No, we have a bunch of beer. So what we're doing today for the show is we're uh, basically doing commercial calibration of two beers, sort of. And then we're going to uh, – Brian's going to wax poetic about off flavors again. So that will be a fun, in- interesting, uh, entertaining, and educational show. Um, and then on our next show, we're just going to go through – Commercial beers that we have, some cool stuff. I have a bottle of Dark Lord here. Got some um, Old Goose, Goose Boone Black Label, which apparently you can. Uh, our friend uh, UK Phil brought that over from Belgium. That's not like something you just. I found at like nice. Monument or whatever. Um, and we have a bunch of other stuff to drink too. And so, how it's going to work with our commercial calibrations is 
Really, we're just going to drink them, and we're going to go through the order of the score sheet. But you know, the guys aren't going to fill out the score sheet because these are like the smoked porter we're opening right now is Alaskan smoked porter. Uh, we have two vintages from 2014 and 2015. Yeah. So, you know, they're hard to find. It's going to be a lot of work. And really, this is a fun show because we're breaking out some cool stuff because Keith's last uh, last show. So, um, you know, we're just going to have a lot of fun. We're going to go through and explain with these two beers specifically how they've changed. Um, we also have, what is that, uh, uh, Brian, that you're pouring right now? It's the Founders Backwoods Bastard. No, not it's craft a, beer. Let's just get that out of the way right yeah, now. I apologize. It's a bourbon barrel aged uh, uh, wee heavy, a Scottish... Scottish ale. So okay, yeah. so this is a going away party as as educational as we can make it. So and I'm, uh, and I'm, you know. re- I'm really excited. It's for a little it. cold too. <laughs> <laughs> Warm it up. Uh, this show is brought to you, of course, by Five Star. You can go to fivestarchemicals.com and learn about everything you need to do to continue to make great beer or to make better beer. I should say, if you're not using Five Star already, uh, the gals at from Five Star were at uh, NHC. Hung out with them for a bit at uh, B and A thirteen. Yeah. Uh, they're nice people. They're good. They do a good job, and uh, they'll do a good job for you if you're not using them already. And if you are, please continue to do so. And uh, if you're not, ask your local homebrew shop to carry it, because everybody needs to know. Five star chemicals. It's the way to go, man. We like them. It is definitely. I, I, by the way, I have some PBW I need to sell. Anybody looking for some PBW? You have a big you don't bucket. Want to, you don't haul PBW to Kentucky or wherever you're going. Uh, I still literally, literally don't know where you're moving. I, you've told me I can't remember because I just I'm thinking of Oklahoma Same. or Kentucky. He's a true West Coaster, like anything east of like Swiss Sacramento. Sacramento. <laughs> yeah, it's like don't... unknown territory. You guys, you're from out out east, huh? Yeah. Like, Do I have to drive through Galt to get there? No. I don't, I, then I don't know. I have no idea. Reno, never heard of no. it. Yeah. yeah. Reno might as well be New York City. <laughs> Very similar. Yeah. What's going on, Bev? Bev looks very exasperated. How can you hear me, by the way? I have my... The headphones are turned up really loud. Uh, you don't want to ruin your hair? Yeah, because it looks real good right now. <laughs> Studio hair, don't care. <laughs> Crazy witch hair, don't care. Yeah, that's true. Um, Brian's so. camera is on, yeah. but I have no signal from it, and it's making yeah. me angry. That's too bad. Okay. All right, well, sorry. It's uh, Brian's too handsome today. Brian's looking too good. He broke my camera with his handsome <laughs> Um, okay, so hey, let's talk about this beer, this Founders beer, and uh, go through the Alaskan Smoke Porters, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll come back, and we will we'll, uh, go through some off flavors, Brian. Is that right? Sound yeah. good to you? I think we'll we'll figure that out. All right. Well, why don't you go ahead and start, since you, it looks like you're ready. No. No? Keith, why don't you go ahead and start, okay. since it looks like Brian's okay, not ready. I am, I am <laughs> as about ready as he is, but anyway, I would enter this beer as a 33... Uh, B. Oh, that's my problem. I'm on the 08 guidelines. Uh, I switched. So it's especially wood age <laughs> beers, and and I don't know if you remember this, but it seems like every show or every other show we get especially wood age beer. Yeah, but usually they don't declare it and they name it like, "Hey, this is Russian Imperial Stout." Like, <laughs> no. no, there's obviously some sort of wood aging going on right this there. This is a 2017 release, by the way, of the Founders Backwoods Bastard. Uh, which the label kind of looks like worn in about 50 years. <laughs> it does. So there's that. Ale aged in oak bourbon barrels. All right. Okay. So I'm, you know, I'm gonna do this off the cuff. We didn't write the, the notes down, and we'll. Uh, That's fine. I've always liked this that that way to, to do these because it's a little more conversational, and I think it's a little more interesting uh, to do it on the fly. But yeah, and this is a fun one to do too because it's, it's kind of a combo of style. So we're talking about a wee heavy, which is a really malty beer, usually really sweet, a lot of a lot of caramel in the nose. Um, yeah. Um, and this, you're getting a lot of that. A lot of that. Uh, Whiskey character, a lot of wood um, on the nose, um, a lot of alcohol too. <laughs> pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty strong uh, alcohol punch there in the nose. Um, otherwise, you know, fairly clean. Maybe getting a little bit of oxidation. It's not not a ton. Just getting a little bit of a little bit of cardboard there. Uh, no hops, um, and the sweetness doesn't really it doesn't really jump out there. I think that it's really being kind of overpowered there somewhat by the by the you know by the the barrel aged uh, character. Um, Appearance wise, it's pretty. It's pretty clear, pretty dark. We're looking at like a uh, eh, medium deep brown, um, tannish head. Does uh, does stick around? It's, it's it's kind of impressive with all the alcohol here, but I you know there is some head uh, still there, and I uh, see some legs as well with this beer. How much does alcohol actually kill head? 
I mean, is it is it a, a big factor in it? By the way, I, I took a sip of this two minutes ago, and I still feel my esophagus <laughs> on fire. <laughs> I have Jesus. Well, it is 11% alcohol. So wow. Like, oh. It smells great. I don't know, Brian, what do you think about alcohol killing uh, head retention at all? It yeah. Necess- it, it, it can, I guess. I don't, it's not, it doesn't necessarily. Look at a lot of Belgian beers. They have all, you know, it depends on what yeah, it's made from as get... well. Like, you know, yeah. how much protein's in the beer and stuff like that. So it's not necessarily going to kill it. Um <clears throat> but it, it can contribute to not having it can contribute to a little bit of lack of head retention. Okay, I think aging too can you know uh, just just aging it out. Some of the the proteins might break down a little bit more and uh, give you a little less than what you, you know, when you pour it fresh. And when you think about you know I do a lot of um, uh, Bigfoot barley wine verticals, and you'll pour the the new ones, and you know they're, they're the head is there because the hops are still <laughs> kind of hop compounds are still there. This one doesn't have the hops, of course, but um, and then, you know, the proteins are a little different, I think, and it forms a lot more of a head. It's lighter. And as it ages, it gets darker and almost sometimes kind of grayish looking or kind of weird co- colors and hazel form in it. So it changes a lot over time. And this one, I think, is a pretty fresh example of the Backwoods Bastard. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what time of year it's released in. This is a 2017, so I'm not sure if that, this is the latest or if there's one that's actually came out after this. I just got um, it a few months ago on Tavor, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's pro- pretty fresh. Yeah, I imagine they'd probably do it. It's more of a, probably a winter beer. They might they bottle it at the end of 2017, yeah. yeah. Like um, but actually, I think it's a year-round now, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, Did not yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just looking. Beginning uh, April of 2018, they started year round, year, year round. I don't so. drink a lot of Founders beers, so I... Being that I'll be moving to Michigan, I will be drinking a lot more of that. So. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. course. Well, hey, man. Wherever you want to move. Tell us how Grand Rapids works out for you. <laughs> I didn't go there for the conference, by the way. But um, Anyway, I was, gonna re- I was ready to read my sheet here. I got so accustomed to looking at score sheets and reading some words and then not reading words, and I realized this is not the score sheet for this beer, so I was just going to read random stuff that had nothing to do with this beer. <laughs> yeah. No one would have no been able to tell the difference at all. <laughs> for it's sure, yeah. a nice <laughs> light malt and a bright hop to it. <laughs> yeah. Hot punch? Uh, yeah, no. So, uh, as you mentioned, JP, there is a lot of alcohol here. I didn't even take a sip yet. <laughs> and it's kind of sharp, actually, in the finish. Like, you know, like a, a lot of times, I would find a, a wee heavy to be a little bit sweeter and a little bit more caramel focused than this. And and this is this is really heavy on the on the wood character and and, and the barrel age character of it. I, I you know, I'm not getting a lot of. Uh, there, I mean, there's some sweetness there, definitely, but it's not. It doesn't remind. It's not as reminiscent of a. Of a uh, wee heavy as I, I would think it would be, I can you could easily tell me this is a barley wine, and I would be like, yeah, it's barley wine. I can I can see that. Yeah, like a barrel aged barley wine. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. And and you know we had on uh, on Monday's uh, session um, the guy who won gold for um, barley wine and uh, NHC, and it kind of tastes similar, yeah. where the body wasn't really there i think it was kind of it was kind of thin and this kind of is thin on the on the end too as thin mm, yeah. as an 11 percent you yeah. know barrel aged beer can be i think that's fair there's no hops again i mean we heavy again is not a style where you're looking at any hop flavor or even aroma and even the, the bitterness should be pretty dialed down um you know i think the sharpness here I'm, I'm assuming is more from the alcohol i mean there is a little bit of hop hop uh, bitterness there too mm-hmm. Maybe even more than i would want to see in a wee heavy Oh, really? You think so? I don't know. There's there, there's some... It could be a stringency from the wood. There seems to be something, yeah, that, that isn't letting the, the malt shine through as much. But, yeah, I think it could be that, just the booziness. Yeah, it's boozy. There's a lot of booze. So, mouth, else, mouth feels just uh, alcohol. Uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> warmth, warm, 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 warm. You know, and we heavy as well. Another fun thing about the style: a lot of times people make it with some uh, roasted barley. I'm not getting really any roast in this beer either. I don't, I don't think you really no. want much in a we heavy either. Just an um, edge of that. Yeah, maybe there's an yeah. edge, and that gives you a little bit, a little bit of that astringency too, possibly a little bit, a little bit more harder finish. <clears throat> um, carbonation's medium, medium low. It, it seems fine. I, even I would probably would like to not even see it as high as it is. I'd be kind of even dial back that a little bit if I were talking about a homebrew right now. Um, I mean, I, for a barrel aged beer. I might actually say for a contestant, like maybe think about aging it a little bit longer, mm-hmm. let the, the, the the warming, like the booze, uh, you know, smooth out a little bit. Yeah. And for a commercial beer like this, you know, it's it's a great beer to age and and leave it, you know, leave it, leave it in your basement or in my cellar where I just was 
for you know another five years, you know, something like that, and try it out. And that's what's great. Like Brian, was this a six pack, a four pack, or what? What does it come in? I just got I, uh, a I couple of single, single bottles. bottles, but yeah, you can get. I think they have six packs of it. Yeah, I mean, it's something that's kind of fun to to, to play four, with. Looks like a four pack on that. Yeah, page. you just you drink one, maybe somewhat fresh, and then save another one for every year. Yeah, make for, notes for getting vintages, and then try them side by side. Which yeah, you know, we Brian and I both like to do that a lot. It looks like their stuff. suggested storage mechanism is to like pound an axe into the side of a tree and set the four pack on top of that. Oh, oh that's, I, I do that and, a lot too. And set one bottle aside. You know, yeah. just, well, that's wood aged, yeah. right? So, in the sunlight, of course. Well, there's no hops, so that won't hurt it. No, no one liked my joke. Um, so, oh, you know, I, I, I'd like it where it is right now, but I would probably be like, hey, dial back the, you know, like, either, you know, find a way to dive up the alcohol, make it a little bit smaller beer. But I think more yeah. likely age is what's going to make this taste this beer taste really great. Mm-hmm. Even like a wee heavy, you, you, some of that uh, uh, more oxidation, getting some of those sherry notes, I think go really well with the style and also with the bourbon. And it's going to, it's going to. You know, not be as hot after a period of time, but I think right now I'd give it somewhere probably in the, the mid mid to mid thirties, let's say thirty five, something like that. Okay, that's what I'd be looking at. Yeah, I would definitely age this. I would not pull this. Like if you have this in your fridge, don't drink it right now. Yeah, I've got another one. I'll, I'll have to hold on to. Yeah, don't <laughs> drink, drink it right that tonight. <laughs> 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 Road soda. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with a lot of what Keith said too. There's just a lot of uh, in the nose. I'm getting a lot of vanilla and bourbon and oak. And like the style is kind of underlying in the in the aroma. It's not not really prominent like what style it is. It's just kind of hiding behind some of that other stuff. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, you can tell it's a malty beer, and there's a lot of alcohol to it. But uh, it's not not telling you, hey, I'm a we heavy, you know, uh, so well in the nose. When you get in the flavor, it's a little different. But yeah, um, it's kind of a nice yeah, like you said, a nice color. Just kind of a really deep copper, almost light brown, and very clear. So it's it's pretty has a decent lasting head, uh, I think for the you know it's still easily aroused uh, despite like fairly low um, carbonation in it. Nice, and yeah, just in the flavor. Yeah, I, I, I took a long time before I got to taking a sip because I was really I was actually kind of enjoying the aroma and all the the boozy stuff and mm-hmm. kind of trying to get at everything in there. And, I think but, it definitely um, smells better than it tastes. Yeah, it, it smells more together than it tastes. I shouldn't say it, it tastes. It doesn't taste bad. And the flavor, yeah, it's it's it, the alcohol and the booze just comes right out first. And this one, and aged, it's probably going to be a little better. So, but they do age it for a year in the the bourbon barrels. Um, you know, I find that it's it's somewhat caramely. It's it's it it does present the style a little bit more in there in the middle middle of the um, flavor, just kind of on the tongue. You get a little bit of coating, a little bit of caramel coming through after the. Initial alcohol bite kind of fades, uh, but yeah, it's definitely to me not quite as. It's not really a sweet malty beer. It's kind of a a dry and tannic malty beer that's, you know, just covered up by by the the booziness. Um, so yeah, I'm getting in the the mouthfeel. I'm also getting some astringency just from the the tannins from the wood. It's a little bit biting, not just from the alcohol, but there's some some astringency there that's pulling away from it for me a little bit. It's not as smooth as hope. It's not creamy at all. Um, and again, carbonation kind of medium low, full bodied, and a huge warmth. It just coats all the way down, and it's yeah. just oh my god, <laughs> it lasts forever. So, and you know that alcohol is not going to go away. It might smooth out a little bit over time, and uh, be a little more um, you know melted kind of flavors, and and the mouth will be a little smoother as time goes along. I think so. Uh, yeah, more elegant. I would hold on to this. That's the word elegant. I would use. You know, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so I kind of agree with that placement. You know, um, mid to upper thirties, kind of thirty seven, something like that. It's it's a it's a well crafted beer and a well aged beer, but it's um, yeah. I don't know if it's if it's changed over the years too with the changes there. I suppose they would swear up and down it has not, but I can't <laughs> say that I've tasted it. You know, consistently right. year after year. I might have tried it one other time or something. I don't really recall too much about what it was back. What would you want to see different about this? I think for me, the more more sweetness. Now you do mention I do get some of the caramel when I'm tasting it, but I think the more sweetness just in general would help balance that that yeah. alcohol tan. You know, the, the tannins from the wood, the alcohol. I think just having more of that that sweeter character. If I was a homebrew, I'd be like, don't make this as mm. as dry as it is. You know, yeah. I like we have these. Like some of them are, are crazy, like with the amount of sweetness, and they're a little over the top, or they're like yeah. cloying. And this is easier to drink. You could see why a brewery would want to make. Hey, let's make it. Let's tone down that that cloying sweetness a little bit, so more people want to drink a little more of it. Mm-hmm. But same yeah. time, like the true wee heavies, and I, I enjoy those beers. But of course, I enjoy them at maybe like a 
<laughs> six or seven ounces at a time yeah. sort of thing. Sure, and, not, yeah, not, not 40, yeah, not, 40, 40, <laughs> right. 40 of one. Yeah. Well, yeah. right, and it, it, it's kind of crazy that, that Founders is releasing this year-round. This is yeah. a year-round beer. Yeah. Who wants this in June? No, yeah, that doesn't seem right. You I mean, I guess it's just it's, it's San Francisco. Seemingly. It's pretty. I, I left there today. It was fifty nine degrees. Got over here and it was eighty eight. So, in San Francisco, it was perfect for uh, this. Would have been good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> not in Concord, man. No. Yeah. Not, so definitely not a little sweetness. For me, if I was brewing it for myself, yes, I would. I would pull the the booze back and the wood because it's just it's it's too much. It's just all those tannins and the booze. I like the style to come through. In tandem with the the booze and the and the wood, and not have it be just so one sided like this is. Do you think this is a beer that they intentionally make, or or let me rephrase: Is this a flavor profile that you would intentionally hit to age a beer to maybe drink in three years? Yeah. Maybe it's not meant to be drunken now. Maybe it's meant to age, and that's why it's kind of big in places. Or is it too is it too jagged to really age out I the mellow a, properly? With a beer like this, though, people get it, and you know, yeah, they want to drink it. Like, get it. They just yeah. want to drink it. Yeah, now. no, I mean, like, hey. if it's a year round release, then it, it has to be something that right that, that they're drinking all the time. And there are people out there who actually like whiskey, and you know, like are, are, you know, <laughs> who are those people? Like? Yeah. I don't know. No, they, this they, would they, be they, a good beer for a, a booze appreciator that doesn't really care for beer. This would be a good entry level beer for them. <laughs> I mean, there's also yeah. there's also the opportunity. That's like, true. Hey, you're sitting outside or on a campfire, even if it's the summer. It's still kind of a kind of a, a cool thing to have. Hey, I'm having a wood aged yeah. beer or something like that. Like, yeah. you know, I don't know. And the name's okay. cool. The, you know, the label's cool. There's this old coot on there with an axe behind him. And <laughs> I, I disagree with that, to, but you know, you know, <laughs> it's not cool at it's, all. Well, it stands it's, out. It's not. It's, it's also, not. You know, it's it's. It's if it's backwoods bastard, they're saying that first of all, it's somebody who, you know, like they're making fun of people from like West Virginia. Well, I'm moving to West Eastern Virginia States. now. Oh, I'm moving yeah. to West Virginia. There you and go. It's like you know they're saying this person's a, a bastard. You know, whatever. You know, like <coughs> it's you know his dad didn't wasn't there, and you know all that sort of stuff, and and maybe that's why he's drinking in the first place. I don't know. Keith's standing up for the it's fictional okay if person. You were, you're in, you know, like. If you grew up in small town Minnesota, say you can, yeah. you can get away with that kind of humor, cause, well, or you your know. parents weren't married, and it's fine. Yeah, sure, you have an axe. Who cares? Who cares what people think? I mean, you better not hear it. Um, what are the other beers we're going to drink on this segment here, boys? Well, which one should we open first? Here we got the we got the Alaskan smoked porter. I would do the fifteen just because let's it's open the fresher. 15. And then uh, let's do the 14, you know, after. As an aside. Yeah, not as detailed, you know, but we do want to make sure uh, we talk about how the flavors change between the two, but we should have some sort of baseline first and then, uh, and then you know, go through that. I have a 17 at home as well, but I can only carry so many beers in my bag. I think 15 <laughs> is a good place to start with this. Yeah, every time I've had so it, too. it's been younger. If you it's, want it, it's been like, wow, it's a little too, yeah. a little too <laughs> rough. While Brian's pouring that, I want to let you guys know that More Beers teamed up with the great John Palmer to make 27 beer kits based on the recipes found in Brewing Classic Styles written by Palmer and Jamil. These kits are true to style and are all within BJCP guidelines, enabling them to be easily entered into that upcoming competition. Buy two kits and get fast, free shipping from More Beer. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, I think so, too. All right, Brian, you look ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you start so, us off, man? Yeah, this is a... Uh, this would be a... Classic-style smoked beer, 32A. And um, what you want to look in here is the a pleasant balance between the expected aroma of the base style and the smokiness imparted by the use of the smoked malts. So... I find in the nose that the um, smokiness is is pretty pleasant, and it's not overwhelming. It's not smacking you upside of the face. Um, you can get to the get to the a light kind of coffee like underneath that, and some. You know, it's not not super roasty, but it, it has almost an impression of being a little roasty from the uh, from the smoke combined with the dark malts in here. But um, there's a little there's some chocolate undertones. Um, there's not any, not any real hop in here. It's just kind of smooth and lightly smoky and, and dark malt, um, character in there. So seems like it's pretty well cared for. I'm not getting any oxidation. Seems nice. And I uh, usually you just nice sleep within my bed. I put it underneath my pillow for, <laughs> for a couple of years. <laughs> nice. 
Appearance wise, it's it's uh, pretty dark brown. You can barely see through it. It's almost opaque, but at the corners you can see that it's pretty pretty clear. It's a it's a fairly dark brown. Actually, I look at the top and you can kind of see through it a little better. These little short glasses when I look up through it, yeah, you can kind of. It's very clear. So um, the head started, you know, kind of medium low and faded pretty quick to kind of a ring around the glass. Um, so yeah, it's not super, not a super big head on that beer. Uh, flavor wise, okay, yeah, the smoke is is pretty mellow in this. It's nice. Um, it's not like a real ashy smoke. It's just kind of like a a distant campfire kind of background. You know, it's not like overwhelming at all. And the malt has a little bit of sweetness in the background. It's not super dry, but it's just dry enough that it works. I think as a as a porter. So yeah. It's, um, you know, the alcohol is, is, is there, but it's not biting you in the face either. It's pretty smooth. I like it. Mouthfeel wise, it's kind of, I would say medium full bodied. It's not like a barley wine kind of body to it. Um, but there's definitely some just real smooth warmth. It doesn't coat and go all the way down the back of the throat like the backwoods bastard does um it does have a little bit of creaminess i'd say there's two there's a little bit of astringency from the the smoke phenolics that are in there kind of a little bit of a bitingness but not not from a malt perspective i don't think uh but overall i really like it um i think this is a good place to start with the age on these you know if you drink them too fresh it's gonna be a lot more in your face so yeah, score wise, I think I'd probably go thirty nine. It's it's it doesn't wow. need too much too much more to be done with it. It's a pretty you get the style and you get the smoke and it's in nice balance. The character of the smoke is nice. It's not ashy. It's just kind of a smooth, pleasant, um, rounded smoke. Then, That's true. Then a sharp, biting one. And um, I think maybe some of the some of the darkest malts in this have probably faded a little bit. And it's not super sweet. So there's something, you know, like I said about the body, it's not very full bodied. It almost feels just like it's starting to thin out a little bit. And I'd be real curious to taste the uh, the 14 next to this and see where it goes from there. I think it's going to continue to thin out. So this beer probably does kind of peak. Although, you, I mean, you can taste really old examples and it's going to be a different animal. But, um, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, where this is gonna hey, go. while Keith uh, runs down what he thinks about it, why don't you crack open that 14, Brian? Give us a little. All righty. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm like, like step by step here. I mean, I'm thinking of all of the same things with the aroma. Like, definitely getting the smoke. Uh, duh. Um, and, and I don't, you know, I don't think it's opaque. You can actually see. It's pretty easy to through it. See through it. Yeah. But I was really. I think the thing that you were touching on yeah. that I, I first like. I didn't realize. I forgot this was only a 6.5 percent alcohol beer. I thought it was bigger. And I definitely, it felt like it was getting thinner. It's thinner now. Like, and I'm really interested in what this one's like because I'm like, wow, this feels a little thin to me. And, you know, I I was really expecting a little more sweetness, a little more body uh, overall. And and it just doesn't really have that. It was like definitely losing some of that. And I think it's really at its probably peak, if not not even, uh, not even, you know, probably past past its peak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I was getting the same thing JP was there, and, and when listening to this beer, it's really loud. But maybe that's coming from the bar, <laughs> and not from here. Uh, it's super loud, yeah. Doesn't have very Sorry. much reverb on it, though. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think I thought it was a little stronger too, though. I, six, six and a six half, and a half. That, that surprises me. I, I assumed eight. I don't know why. Yeah, no, me too. And then yeah. and, and if you look at it that way, I mean, it was getting a little bit of oxidation, a little bit of papery uh, character from it, but more than anything else, that sort of that dryness where I didn't, I don't remember that being like, like when I had this really fresh before, it's always been really, really harsh where it's almost like, you know, it's like astringent and it's kind of like, like, like cinder. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. just not ashy, a, tar-like ashy, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not a good flavor. And you're like, but this is, this is nice. I'm almost thinking. I'm not drinking the second one yet, but I'm thinking that this one, the first one, is really at its, you know, if it's a little bit past its peak. So what was it? A two two thousand fifteen. So maybe you know, like three years is kind of right around the longest you want to wait on something like this because it's not a huge beer. But I agree, the smoke, man. The smoke does preserve it somewhat, but it is starting. You can tell it's starting to fade. So what's the two thousand fourteen one like? I smell. Well, first of all, it's not as opaque. It's a little bit darker. It looks like. 
but maybe it's just there's a little bit different levels in my glass. But I get a uh, metallic, like a blood thing in the aroma. In the 14 mm. one? In the 14 In the 14, one? yeah. Yeah. And well, and, and, you know, we're talking real f- just real fast about, about years and, 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 and how long it is to age this. I know it's, it's, a, it's a, a less alcohol, low alcohol beer. But for me, we were, when we were talking about on the, uh, the Bigfoot show, when we did the Bigfoot vertical, um, 15 was my favorite year of Bigfoot. I think three years is perfect for that beer. And that's, what, 11 or 12 or 10 maybe? It's not six and a half. Yeah. So I think yeah. th- three yeah. years for, for anything under seven, you know, man. Three to five years for, a, yeah, like a 90 percenter is usually pretty good. For yeah. The foot. I like yeah, those. Yeah, it does have the smoke that's going to preserve it a little bit more. But, yeah, it's not. I agree with you. I think, like, I think, yeah, I would I would drink this at, at two years old. I think it would probably be where it's okay. really peaking instead of. And the 14's kind of, it's falling it's The, the it's smoke's even apart. falling off a lot. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you should have had that first because now I'm like, where is the smoke <laughs> on the 14? Well, I think the smoke <laughs> has kind of turned to ashy. Yeah, more of the sweetness is gone. Sweetness, kinda, yeah, it's, yeah it's, like it's, campfire yeah, yeah, ashy. And you lose that sweetness, you lose that, mm-hmm. that that balance that you need to make the the smoke palatable. It's like a little bit like the the coffee boiling on the bottom of the burner, you know, just kind of yeah. ooh, like yeah. diner coffee. Yeah, ooh, a little nice. bit of that. It Love gets more stuff. dinerish as it goes. Like the first one was a little. It's not like super fresh coffee kind of taste, but it's it's a little more. But do you get that there. that kind of metallic? I like the balance a lot better. Mm-hmm. I got the metallic yeah. on the, the 14, yeah. yeah. More on the nose than the flavor, but I, I do get in the flavor somewhat too, but I get definitely the nose. I could, I could hear what, what you're saying there. What, is, what, what would account for that? I would I assume it's something from the, some metallic thing, like the cap, I guess. The cap but, or something? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's but not, it can't it's be. It's coated, so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It wasn't like sideways or anything. or even, it, was in, it was stored at a basement temperature, not even in the fridge, which is... Whatever, either way we want to look at that, but um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it'd be interesting to see if it was like that initially. Uh, you know, metallic is, yeah, a lot of the things that you, you talk about flaws in metallic are things that really likely wouldn't happen in a commercial brewery. Like what? Um, it's like rust, brass fittings yeah, that brass, are brass, uh, brass, uh, brass yeah. worn off. Okay, yeah, all and, right, you know. I mean, they're going to have stainless. It, I guess it can be an infection as well, uh, like that bloody sort of, that, that blood flavor, like the, the penny flavor. Mm-hmm. Too. And sometimes that's more like from water, like that's from your water that's source. What it, that's again, what it tastes like, 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 a, yeah. like a penny. Yeah, and it's, it's from a water source. And again, like that's not something I would expect from a from a commercial brewery. And yeah, mm-hmm. look it up, Ryan. Like, I've, I've had a hard time with that one before. We've talked about that in, in judging classes. And, and a lot of the descriptors there are talking about weird things like water, uh, or like contact with metals that are you know not not treated or not shouldn't be in contact with what with the with the beer, um, but that's not um, something I would expect from from this. Yeah, it's been an age thing, and with the smoke somehow it's playing uh, playing a role there. Yeah, that's crazy to me. It's uh, but they're very they're they're kind of very different, being just a year apart. They, they. I wouldn't expect that these were the same beer. Yeah, it's a lot. The the, the 2015 is a lot sweeter when you mm-hmm. taste them side by side. And that, and for me, the 2015 I thought wasn't sweet enough. And <laughs> and, and it's a lot it's, sweeter yeah. than the. Yeah, and I wonder if they. Do you know if they make recipe adjustments on this? I mean, you know, besides the you know tweaks here and there based I on. I mean, everything's malt. an adjustment somewhat, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like the malt, the monsters change. Maybe they don't get the same product they did before. Yeah. Or they, you know, whatever. Like they, they they taste the previous year. Like they have to switch it up a little bit. So I would say they, you know, they probably don't announce those. But I think any beer, even like celebration, makes you know they're always adding that will new, never new, change. New never say that. To it. Uh, red mm-hmm. nutmeg. Every I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, no. So they probably do make some changes to it, just mm. to sort of you know fix some things. They, they look like they're different. They, they do look different. In terms they look of different. They yeah. kind of taste different. Yeah. Um, I yeah. wish I wish I had a sixteen. I had a seventeen. I should have brought that as well. It would have been fun just to see where it was. But it, being that it was a year off, it would have been kind of a little bit weird. Yeah. I, just, out, I did think the the balance was a lot better to me than the the backwoods bastard Ooh. having a little age on it. So um, yeah, metallic can come up a lot of different ways. Obviously, from you know equipment that is. Uh, you know, improperly uh, maintained or like, you know, or chrome fittings have worn down to, to brass or something that you probably shouldn't even be using in your brewery. <laughs> um, also from just metallic ions in your in your brewing water or, um, you know, anything leached from, from metallic sources, like even the, the cans that you store your 
filter powders or any syrups they're using. Hmm. Um, but another thing that can happen is, and it's not really fully understood why, but uh, metallic notes can also come up due to uh, products of lipid oxidation uh, as a beer ages. So it's, a process, and it's not really understood why, but um, yeah, it, can, it can also promote the formation of other staling compounds. So, yeah, I don't know. That's that's kind of weird. But I definitely get that metallic thing in the older one. Yeah, it's super, uh, super there. Uh, anyway, let's take a break real fast and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little more about uh what off flavor are we going to talk about today brian um what are, how about uh, <laughs> how about higher alcohols higher alcohols you got it all right everyone stay tuned it's dr homebrew we'll be right back talking about higher alcohols in just a sec Fellow BNers, this is Sully from the 21st Amendment Brewery located in San Francisco, just two blocks from Giants Park. Before Nico and I opened the 21A and before I was a professional brewer, I homebrewed on my small four-burner apartment stove in a back house in Santa Monica, California, making my extract brews before graduating to the daunting idea of all-grain brewing. Homebrew books and information was hard to come by back then. The Internet hadn't been invented yet, along with other things we take for granted today, like electricity and potable water. One thing I wish I had back then when I was learning was a radio show that could teach me the ins and outs of brewing and answer questions that I had about homebrewing, a resource for making great craft beer. The 21st Amendment Brewery is excited to be a proud sponsor of Dr. Homebrew, a great show that teaches you what you need to know about making incredible beer. Good stuff. Listen up. You might learn something. I certainly did. And thanks for your support. Tasty Crack Game. Now, back to the examination. All right. Before we learn about higher alcohols, which are alcohols that can get you high, I imagine, you should know that Grog Tag is your one-stop homebrew customization shop. They have it all from reusable beer and wine labels to durable metal signs to high-quality coasters and everything is customizable. So get creative over on grogtag.com with one of our hundreds of templates and we'll print it on high quality materials and ship it out to you. It's easy. Check out grogtag.com today and use code BNARMY to save 10% on your next order over at grogtag.com. All right there, okay. Bri Bri, let's go. <laughs> so, what do you think? Higher alcohols. Let's go. Let's get hammered. Alcohols. Let's get wasted on higher alcohols. Generally bad you don't want them in your beer okay the end all right thank you for what is a higher alcohol so what uh it sounds are, great to me but ethanol is a pretty short chain alcohol it's a pretty simple uh formation of it but as you get longer chains of of carbon with with the alcohol kind of formation you know if i'm not really a chemist i don't even play one on tv <laughs> that's um, too bad they start to have um, more kind of burning, harsh, hot, and uh, you know sharper sensations. So um, they might actually have an initial kind of sweetness to them, but the aftertaste is always going to be harsh. It's just when you drink a beer and you get that in the finish, it's, that's that's the higher alcohol is coming through. Um, and um, you know the concentration of beer varies a little bit. That's it's yeah. I think it's a pretty a pretty low threshold for for being able to pick them up. You know, it's uh, usually fifty to two hundred milligrams per liter is going to be a, you're going to you're going to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, they're def- they're produced by the yeast. It's it's something that the yeast kicks out uh, when it's distressed, or if you get a wild yeast in there. And likewise, if you use a you know, you're starting with a very high gravity wort, something that the yeast has to kind of fight to process. Yeah. Uh, or you know you, you're you're using a high fermentation uh, temperature, the yeast is going to kind of go wild and kick out some different kinds of alcohols that you don't want. Rather than the intended under one. pitching do that as well. Do you think like with the, yeah. you know, if you're really high, uh, you know, a high gravity wort and you under pitch, um, would it stress the yeast enough to produce some of these higher alcohols? Yeah, I believe it's gonna it's gonna kick out more as the if the yeast is, is stressed, in other words, and just just fighting to process what it needs to process, it's gonna have a harder time and just start kicking out other things besides just the the intended uh, alcohol that it, that it's uh, 
that it's pushing out when it's the happiest, you know. I like to make my yeast happy. <laughs> I'm always talking about happy yeast. Yeah, well, they but, make um, you happy. So yeah, underpitching is definitely one of the causes. Um, sometimes it can be something like a mineral deficiency even, you know, if you don't have the right balance of uh, uh, minerals in your water to keep the yeast happy, micronutrients, just in general, poor yeast health. And also if you if you don't oxygenate a beer well enough, you know, if you just like, oh, I'm just going to, pitch the yeast in there i forgot to shake my carboy or or push in some oxygen and it's a 1080 starting gravity you know you're gonna have some problems <laughs> so yeah just to avoid and control them you just want to keep proper fermentation temperature uh for your beer uh you definitely want to um you know not pitch as as uh warm as you know if you pitch it too warm and oh, cool it down you know, sometimes it, it can get kicked out early in the fermentation and not really go away uh you want to have proper just proper yeast health correct pitching rates for the, the work gravity and style and there's so many good yeast calculators out there you can use to just dial it in right and yeah. uh you know put in the the date on your packet of yeast and and uh, know exactly how much to to grow it up in your starter to to get the right amount so yeah um which is great technology. I mean, come on. Yeah. That's amazing. I guess another another thing you can do to avoid it, too, is um, you don't want to oxygenate your fermenting wort or your green beers. Uh, it's going to hmm. kick out some – the yeast will pull that in and kick out some weird stuff then, too. So just, um, yeah, keep the oxygen oxygen on the early side and, uh, you know, just – Keep your keep your fermentation healthy, basically. Like we're always telling you people to do, and most of you actually do really well. So. Yeah, well and he, this, is, this is something that's really common with uh, newer brewers, mm-hmm. and especially in different different parts of the country. Like, yeah, uh, you know where I'm, I'm moving to in Illinois, they're gonna have <laughs> uh, a lot of you know warm summers there. And when you're in a warm summer, you know that's another thing. You know, higher alcohol. First of all, that. Second of all, like newer brewers tend to not pitch the right amount of yeast. Yeah, it's and, like you, you're just like, okay, well, I ordered this recipe kit, and it came with one pack of yeast, and that's what I get. That's and all, I, And that's like, all I should use. They right, gave me the right like amount. Like you said about nutrients and oxygenation and all that stuff as well, and yeah. people like to make big stuff like early on, too. Like, hey, I'm going to make a double IPA cool. right out of the gate. <laughs> I mean, sorry, a double, uh, double chocolate double IPA with, <laughs> with uh, rhubarb. <laughs> yeah. That sounds good. Make that one. sounds pretty good. I'm gonna make that, so. <laughs> all right, there you go. Well, do know, they grow rhubarb on the moon? Because that's where you're moving to. So, Man, moon, there is a place called Moon PA, and I may be able to oh. move there. Moon right outside the airport of Pittsburgh. Moon pie. All right. Moon pie. <laughs> Sounds pie. good. Sounds great. Sorry. All right. Well, um, higher um, alcohols, man. That sounds gross. Now I don't like them. At first, I was and, for them. Now I'm against them. What are some of the bad? You know, the bad after. You know, like, uh, bad headaches or something. That you get, bad hangover. I mean, anytime yeah. you drink too much of something, you're going to get a bad hangover anyway. But no, it, it definitely, you know, the cleaner the beer is, you'll notice you're drinking beer, a lot of beer sometimes from a clean brewery, and you'll have, you know, no problems. Then you drink that, you know, 40 ounce or, you know, Colt 45 or whatever the hell. That's <laughs> disgusting. And then you feel like shit the next day. So, yeah. But smooth. All right, right. Or Vicky's just, malt liquor or something. Yeah, you know. just to be clear, I that shit is I've smooth. I've gotten worse hangovers from drinking cider. Huh. What can you tell me about that, Brian? <laughs> don't drink cider. Yeah, that's 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 my answer as well. That's your answer. But no, I don't know. I don't know if it's like the you know the, the makeup of the you know the sugars that you're fermenting versus having you know malts and yeah and, and like that. But I, I I mean you know with anything like yeah you can't like, you can't mix. I'm like whatever. You just can't drink too much. You get a hangover. But that's yeah. the thing, man. Yeah, I've but, never yeah. followed. I still that. think like cider cider still is the, like it, it it seems like it's worse than you know like you know than. So yeah, you're sulfites. Are you a sulfite person? Maybe simpler, simpler sugar in there to, for the yeast to ferment, and it, it might just kind of get lazy and kick out some weird stuff as it's like just cruising through it. I mean, maybe hmm. I don't know. Maybe you want to ferment your ciders a little lower just to try to. If, if you tried to, you know, ferment them just a little I, bit, I think lower. it was all perfect temperature control. Really, They're all not, that fine. was the issue. Yeah. <laughs> okay. this, is, this is my sister who told me this too. By the way, it wasn't me. Yeah. I okay. drank a bunch of my cider, and she was like, I had the worst hangover. I'm like, you just don't drink enough. That's <laughs> <laughs> probably what it is. I don't know. But I, I, actually, I've experienced some pretty bad hangovers from cider, and it may just be that they're easy to consume when they're kind of dry. and you know. Yeah. That's probably more what it is. And you kind of yeah. guess maybe the, the source of it. You know, It could be from a wild yeast if you also get – um, something else alongside that, like a little spiciness or something, like a you know, like a spider a sit down beside her, something yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's just 
just pure higher alcohols is probably just poor yeast management, you know. In judging, how often do you come across higher alcohols? How common is it, do you guys, when you it's, when you sit down and fill a sheet out? It's it's it gotten style. less common over the year, but years. But it's it's yeah, some of the Belgian styles. You get people that are like they want like, they love the Belgian style of beers and they yeah. want to brew them when they're pretty early on in brewing. Mm-hmm. And then you I did the same thing. Man, yeah. yeah, really. Okay, but right. not. I mean, not you know. It's still only like maybe one out of ten beers, something like that. Yeah, but like normal beer, like hey, if you're judging, like hey, I'm gonna judge lockers and you're getting higher alcohols, then <laughs> there's something else going on. You're, you may be doing LSD while you're judging, but um, I don't know. No, you don't really, you don't really see a ton of it. I don't think, but it's it's really more style dependent, I think, than anything else. Okay, so I think it also has to do with the amino acids in your wort. So uh, some of the advice I'm seeing here too says oh. to avoid over modification during mashing, so you don't get too many amino acids in your the wort you're collecting. Mm-hmm. Um. But they also will break down over time, so uh, you know, like that the backwoods bastard, you know, that's gonna the, some of the bigger, boozier, higher alcohol warmth in that is gonna is gonna die down over the years and 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 break down into simpler alcohols, and it it does it is something that'll forgive it. But you know, if you if you get higher alcohols in your IPA, it's gonna be dead in six or eight weeks anyway, so <laughs> it's not gonna help you. Right. You know, if it's an, a beer you can set down and age, then then that's you just need to age it out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, Brian. Well, thanks, man. That's it for higher alcohols. Higher alcohols. Thank you. Pretty easy topic to avoid. Pretty easy, uh, easy problem to yeah, avoid, I, right? Sounds I find like. that, you know, yeah, a lot of people, it, it takes them a while to come to terms and, and figure out temperature control and that, you know, and, and actual good pitch rates. It It is... Something that you just have to be told by other brewers, like, wow, <laughs> you know, taste your beer. And it's like, this oh. is what this yeah. is. I used to just yeah. ferment at room temperature when I first started brewing and pitch the one little smack pack. And back then, the smack packs were half the cell count that they are now. Right. And it was just like, that's what you got. That's what I got at the homebrew shop. And they gave me with the kit. So I'm, that's what I they told me. Double IPA. And this is what I did. And it's like, well, you know, it'd be better if you, so you you know, it's something you come to late, but you should, have, you know, a newer brewer should probably come to it a little earlier. Now, I know a guy in our club that had, I don't think he's even brewed yet, but he's like thinking about all this stuff. And of course he's like a chemist guy, you know, so mm-hmm. he's like, he's going to brew, but he's going to do it right when he does. And he, you know, yeah. he's retired. So he's kind of on a budget too. And he's I think close, I, slowly I talked co- to that guy collecting all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. He's a pretty cool dude. But, uh, uh, yeah. All right. Well, th- thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. Let's take a real fast break. I should have just merged right. these breaks together, but I didn't do it. So, who wins the grog tag this week? That's a good question. Maybe uh, Keith. Founders. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, founders. Hang on. We'll be right back on the other side of this break, folks. Just stay tuned. Do you know the three most important rules in brewing? Sanitation, sanitation, and sanitation. And no one does it better than Five Star Chemicals. Five Star knows sanitation. You can only sanitize clean equipment. And Five Star knows how to clean, too. For craft brewers and home brewers, Five Star has what you need to keep your fermenters, serving tanks, kegs and draft lines sparkling and free of any beer-spoiling bacteria. PBW, caustic, acid cleaners, star sand, Santa Clean, lubricants and defoamers, pH stabilizers, and more. Five Star Chemicals has cleaning supplies, safety supplies, heat exchangers, pumps, hoses, and valves. And Five Star is proud to offer eco-friendly products that exceed customer expectations. If you you have a cleaning problem you need the five star solution visit five star chemicals.com or call 800-782-7019 800-782-7019 and get the five star treatment today are you a member of the white labs customer club if not you should be it's the easiest way to earn free stuff for turning in your old homebrew labels from either vials or pure pitch. All you have to do is save your labels and redeem them for things like free yeast, an exclusive White Labs t-shirt or sweatshirt, and even the opportunity to brew with the yeast man himself, Chris White. Signing up is easy. Just go to whitelabs.com slash customer club, fill out the registration form, and then mail in your labels. They will return the favor by sending you awesome White Labs swag. Go sign up today at whitelabs.com slash customer club. White Labs, pure yeast and fermentation since 1995. I'm sorry to tell you this, but we're going to have to pour you out. Back to Dr. Homebrew.
The city of Concord, everybody, is the perfect place to start or expand your craft beer business. Concord is centrally located in the Bay Area. It boasts strong craft beer loving demographics. The city's historic downtown is experiencing a boom with new businesses opening and new apartment developments in the pipeline. Concord's business and industrial parks are centrally located off major freeways and are perfect for large-scale brewery operations. The city's economic development team is ready to help you find a successful location to meet your business needs and help you through the permitting process. Give Brian Nunnally a call at 925-671-3018. He's ready to help you open up your business in Concord. I will vouch for the, you know, there are a lot of uh, good beer appreciators here. You just sit out, sit on the, the bar here at the uh, Hop Grenade. And, where where uh, is Concord? <laughs> I don't even know where, where it is, though. It's in Tennessee. I, I just think. get on a, I get on a train and I end up here. You're they in cha- it. They changed the name of the train. Like, it used to go to Pittsburgh Bay Point. Not Bay Point. Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah, Pittsburgh Bay Point. Bay Point. Now mm-hmm. it's Antioch. Antioch, yeah. I'm like, what the hell? Like, where am I going? I'm like, look, I'm like, my train's not here anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, because they opened up an air BART. This is how stupid the Bay Area is. We voted, apparently, at some point to extend BART to in, from Pittsburgh through to Antioch. Pittsburgh used to be the end of the station. Now it's Antioch. But to get from Pittsburgh to Antioch, you have to get off of the train that you're on. And then get on one of those air BART, like diesel powered trains to ride the extra five minutes. We didn't vote to bring BART that we currently have into Antioch. It's now it's a big it's a big big pain in the ass. You have to get off the fucking anyway, sorry. Um uh, well before we leave, we are gonna open a couple of beers real fast just because Keith's leaving and uh we can. So what are we drinking uh here, Brian? Uh this is uh precious material, Hellas Lager from Earth Rider. Brewery in uh, Duluth, Minnesota. So I got this from my brother when I was uh, visiting mm-hmm. him and my mom in South Dakota. Yeah. We all kind of gathered there with my cousin Chad, and uh, Jimmy and I drank a lot of beer and played some darts and pool, and we had this killer um, Airbnb in, in Deadwood. We mm-hmm. had so much good beer there. It was awesome. That sounds great. I told him to bring a bunch of uh, Nuclearis beer, and they brought a bunch of this the Earth Rider Brewery stuff. Uh it's not bad. It's a little. Is it a little sweet? A little like sweet tart little kind of thing. But um, I mean, we're not going to do like commercial calibration yeah. kind of breakdown. But we're just no. going to chat about it real fast. I think for a ha- look, I'd be happy if I if I came into here and this beer was on tap and I paid for it. I I, I would be that's I would a, be fine with it. Pleasant Hellas, yeah. That's not yeah. a beer that every brewery makes. So, you know. but every brewery should. We well, should. I shouldn't say that because it, it would do them poorly. Yeah. <laughs> It's a hard beer to make. It really is. I mean, there's the balance, and it can't be too bitter, and you mm-hmm. don't want it to be too sweet. But at the same time, you know, you need enough of that that malt character, and you need, you know, I think you really need good malts, like good traditional, like you know, Pilsner malt. You can't use just American malt and get away with it. So. <laughs> just two row Hellas. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's 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 a simple beer, but challenging at the same time. Yeah, this is agreed. Good. This is good. I, you know, I like this. Um, yeah, the uh, Tim Nelson from the the Fitgers Brewery fame started this brewery as a uh, they kind of sold that one and it's it's so there's some new offshoots. Duluth is actually a really good beer city if you ever get out there. It's pretty fun awesome. to explore. There's uh, how's the tiki bar scene? How's the tiki bar scene? The tiki yeah, I only care about the tiki there. bar scene, dude. Let's go into any tiki bars, but you know they don't just make IPAs there. There's like you know uh, you know the there's the bent paddle. There's the, you know these guys make a lot of different styles. Uh, the Earth Rider guys and and yeah, bent paddle makes. Browns and you know, I mean, pale ales and IPAs, but a lot of other things too. It's just a good, good blend and a good variety. Awesome. Well, hey man, sounds good. What do, you guys, what do you guys think of this beer, yet. Keith? I, I like it. Um, uh-huh. Thought it was a little, little grainy as well. It's got a little uh, sulfur to it. Yeah, I mean, those things are all appropriate. That's, that's mm-hmm. all fine. Yeah, as it should. Yeah, I, I think you know, it's not bad. It's maybe a little chalky, a little minerally kind of thing. I think a little longer lagering time would uh, make it a little bit better. Mm-hmm. But I'll probably, they'll probably come back and tell us it was lagered for six months or something <laughs> like that. I love saying things like that. And they have good water there, too. I mean, it's right on the tip of Lake Superior. So I don't think yeah. it was. I, I mean, I, I can generally taste some of these things, and, and, and it, it tastes... Um, it, when I whenever I have loggers that people say they're loggered and they're not loggered, and I find out later that I was right and and everybody else was wrong, it, it, that beer tastes sharp to me, and this beer kind of has that a little bit. Mm-hmm. 
But it's not bad. I mean, it's it's not it's not bad beer at all. Um, did you were you thumbing around with a bottle there too, Keith? What yeah, you I got? poured something that's really goofy. And it's really warm right now, but it was oh. a Guinness Antwerp Stout. It was part of like their oh. special release. For, Is this it right? Uh, yeah, special okay. release for St. Patrick's Day. They had like uh, four beers in it. This one was eight percent alcohol. Beer. Wow. Um, just kind of fun, just to taste some of the beers they were making that were different. I'm getting, I think I'm getting some diacetyl in this. No, that, yeah, definitely. But, yeah, I was say. Butterscotch for sure. Maybe even a little green apple too. It's got like some little funk to it there. I mean, not funk, funk, but it's very creamy, almost like a milk stout. And it may, yeah, I remember what the or like a like a chocolate milkshake kind of a thing. Like in the nose, you almost smell. It smells like it's. Um, possibly going to be a little more tart than it is but it's not really hmm. tart or anything it's not I like i get a little tart i get a little well, that sour a lot, of their, a lot of the bottled beers they have are they're like slightly <clears throat> sour yeah right? mm-hmm. i mean that's kind of what they're doing yeah it is it's not like a, a sharp biting uh roastiness it's like this kind of rounded like slightly it's like a sour milk kinda. stout it was like one of the first not this beer but like in general like even the the guinness and bottles I forget what the name of that one is specifically. It's not yeah. the export one's better, but it was like one of the first beers I had that, you know, that was actually good beer. It was like Sierra Nevada Pale Ale was the first, and then this was like they used to have it like a locals like whatever a little deli right by where I was, was in college, and hmm. you know, freshman sophomore year, someone would grab me a, a, a bottle of Guinness like that, and I was like, oh, this is great, you know, like it tastes like a milkshake then to me, and yeah, you know, that sort of thing. And so this this kind of reminds me of that a little bit too. All of that beer still is available, so. I could just drink that beer and remind myself of that and uh, bring something <laughs> different. But, yeah, definitely some diastol going on here. Well, we were talking about water, and uh, if you guys didn't know, the Smart Brew Water Testing Kit incorporates a revolutionary photometer system, which is the first and only one on the market with its own app. It's perfect for home or commercial use. It's the only meter on the market that runs water tests with no math needed on your part. You let the machine, the little computer do it, everything for you. You can email the results of your water test to your brewers or post to your Facebook page at the Homebrew Club. Get your lowdown on your base water profile. You have the ability to test for over 40 different water quality tests. Four come preloaded and more are available. Things like total alkalinity, chloride, calcium hardness, pH, sulfate, and more with only four mils of water needed. Check out smartbrewkit.com. Enter code TBN10 at checkout and save 10 bucks on either the standard or advanced Smart brew testing kit. The iDip. It's perfect. <clears throat> I like it's it. It's a cool toy. They were NHC too, man. Their booth yeah. was slammed. I never got a chance to go over and oh, say hi. Oh, man. Yeah, those guys are selling some. I saw the, the new um, thing that they're, they're pushing out. They have a new um, pH meter. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. We went over and saw that, right? Yeah. Man. Right, I missed right before out. before we recorded one of the shows, you were busy setting stuff up over yeah, there. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, this Antwerp and Stout is like an 8% ABV. It's pretty it's pretty uh, beefy. It doesn't taste like it, though. But, yeah. You it's don't really, pretty mellow, man. It just kind of comes through as a little sweetness in there. Yeah. That's not bad. All right. Well, hey, let's get out of here. What do you think? Okay. Well, Keith, one show down. One more one show left. Wow, this is, this is you know this is getting sad now. This is really happening. We're yep. gonna we're gonna pour him into his uh, into his Bart train. And uh, yeah, I'll be in uh, Missouri if anybody's looking for me. <laughs> yeah, Missouri uh, on my way to the center of the earth to live with the mole people. Learn how to say it right though. It's Missouri. Missouri. When you live there. Missouri. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Doctor Homebrew. And until next time, we will see you later. Well, most of us will. Keith might not. Keep pouring beers.